This is A. Three Messengers. Broadcasting. Gospel Presentation. Presenting to you God's three angels' messages of Earth's final days. Hello, friends. Hope you had a blessed week this week. And, uh, you know, a, a wonderful day today, and as the Sabbath approaches, hope it will come with, with all its blessings as we celebrate the Sabbath together today. In commenting on our church and the state it is in as an organization and how it has changed over the years, I cannot help but remember a chapter from the book of Revelation in the Bible I've read. It's Revelation chapter 3. And particularly in the verses 13 to 22, the Seventh-day Adventist church has grown to leaps and bounds from its very humble beginnings in Battle Creek, Michigan in 1863. This was about the same year President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. And that is over like one and a half centuries ago. But now we have seen a church that uh, we have seen a church that in some congregation are nothing in some of our congregations that is are nothing like the original remnant church we do not look like our our uh the church that uh our our uh, founding members had, had started Some of our churches are not recognized when juxtaposed with churches of other religions. We can hardly recognize some of our congregations because they look quite the same as many of the other evangelical and other uh, Christian churches. Now, believers have complained how secular some of our churches have become. That's what I've noticed. And a war of words sometimes are being exchanged between those who want the membership to hold on to the foundational doctrines of the church and those who want to, to bring to be a, a new movement in the denomination wants it to look and become more secular and there are people within the the clergy of the Seventh-day Adventist Church that wants this to be the new face of the Seventh-day Adventist Church but should must we compromise its values in exchange for a large membership of young people should we do that you know must the church compromised its values in exchange for a large membership of young people who continues to enter and exit the church of the, you know, when they come in, they leave unsaved. They come in unsaved and they leave unsaved. Since some have already hardly seen the difference in practice and lifestyle of other secular churches, so if someone is coming into the church 
who is quite uh, who is living a secular lifestyle and they see the church and they want to come in and they want to become a member of the church but continue into that same secular lifestyle of sin should we accommodate that, that as a church or should we stick to our foundational doctrine of the seventh day Adventist church you know, when someone uh, comes to Christ, they may see, they may look at us and compare us to other churches to see if they would be comfortable within our church and within its membership. And many people, different people, become members of a church for different reasons. They become members for different reasons. You know, some are more into the teachings of the church while some are in it for the, for a sense of belonging to an organization and after that they become converted and become members so you know for for different people it's different reasons for becoming a member of a church but uh must the church compromise its values in exchange for a large membership of young people who continues to enter and exit the doors of the church unsaved, since some have hardly seen the difference in practice and lifestyle of other secular churches, that someone should come to Christ, then those same ministers will preach that you cannot live clean and, sancti and a sanctified life. So some ministers are preaching a doctrine that you cannot live a sanctified life but that's contrary to bible teaching but because you can live a sanctified life through the power of jesus christ and if you trust the lord he will help you to to, to live that life that sanctified life that you have to live after convincing someone who is unconverted that they cannot live a sanctified life, they will see no reason whatsoever to remain in the church as they can live the unsanctified lifestyle that they want to live outside the church. Telling our young brothers and sisters that they are born in sin and, are homosex and, and those that are homosexuals that they can come and remain celebrate but not seek to change and not to seek conversion through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Make them see no reason whatsoever to remain in the church. Some preachers in our church and other Protestant churches have preached a religion not based on truth, which is an antichrist religion. I believe that that type of religion is an antichrist religion. The church needs to take the counsel of John the Revelator, an inspired prophet of Jesus Christ, to change its attitude and message that is presently being given to the world. I challenge you, whether you are a lay preacher, if you are a lay preacher, or you are an ordained pastor, or any other position you hold, even if you are a baptized believer who like to preach the word of God, that the foundational doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventist Church when preached to unbelievers are more effective. It is more effective in converting the youth and older believers who are seeking the truth. If they are seeking truth, teach them truth. Don't, do not teach compromising and com complicit a complicit and compromising message. Preach the truth. Preach the foundational doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A watered-down message of complicity and compromise will not save anybody from the world during these last days. The unblemished word of God is what works. It is what converts people. It is called the Bible. It is the inspired word of God. Teaching 
unbelievers, the unconverted, from the inspired word of God with the belief that the blood of Jesus Christ has power in it to save, to convert, to transform, to transform the lives of even these young people who are seeking a, a sense of belonging, to belong to an organization, to belong to something, but most of all to belong to the family of God and the family of Jesus Christ, his son. Friends, this is a time when we must get serious and, and buckle up. We've got to get serious. The signs of the nearness of God is coming are all around us. The signs of the coming and the nearness of the Lord Jesus Christ is all around us. We have been see we have seen droughts. We have seen all the signs. We have seen hurricanes, we have seen earthquakes, we have seen famines, we have seen pandemics, we have seen wars, and we have seen pestilences like the one that killed over a million people in America in the past couple of years. We have seen all of that, but the Bible had prophesied about these things. The Bible had prophesied about these things. And now they are, they are, they are with, with us and some have passed and gone. What else are we waiting for to get ready for the coming of the Lord? Are more than, you know, after that one million people pass, should not that uh, in some way have an impact on our lives? To know that the coming of the Lord can be for us at any time, at any moment. It could be in the form of death or it could be in the form of Christ coming suddenly. We know not the hour of the Master's appearing. That song actually has a great message. We know not the hour of the Master's appearing. For signs are foretold that it that the moments are nearing. When, when he shall return, it's a promise most yearning or cheering, but we know not the hour. He will come, he will come. Let us watch and be ready. He will come, he will come. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He will come in the cloud of the Father's bright glory, but we know not the hour. So we do not know the hour, that Jesus Christ will come and we have to be prepared for his coming. We can no longer be complacent as a church but should and must return to the foundational doctrine of the Seventh-day Adventist church. It does not serve Christ's approval to preach a weak and watered down gospel that keeps its hearers unconverted. Reading from Revelation chapter 3 verses 13 to 22, it states that he that hath an hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I believe that the message in uh, Revelation 3 to the Laodicean church is the message for our church today and our churches because a lot of uh, congregations, both Adventist and non-Adventist, are actually uh, demonstrating these kind of traits, these kind of traits of arrogance, that we are in a position and we are this and we are that. We are in need of nothing, you know. But, but, but Jesus is saying that if we are in a lukewarm state. In verse 15 of Revelation chapter 3, it says, I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. But thou art neither cold nor hot. 
So when, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You know, that is a very strong, <laughs> very, very strong uh, statement made by the Lord in his word to wake up and to come out of our state of lukewarm, our Laodicean state. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. We're all of these. We're all of these things. We're poor, blind, and naked, and wretched, and miserable. But we believe that because we are in a so-called developed country, first world country, and we're, we're, rich in, we're rich in goods, in houses, and cars, and land, clothes, and jewelry, and education degrees that we are okay, that we are fine, and we can just do whatever we wish, or we live whatever our watered down Christianity, our on uh, our, you could say our 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 Christianity that is not is not connected to Christ that does not have that close relationship with Christ and um, find ourselves in a state where we will not be ready when he returns. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, according to, to Revelation 13, verse 18. Rev, sorry, Revelation 3 and verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me Gold tried in the fire that thou mayst be rich, and white raiment that thou mayst be clothed, and the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eyesalve that thou mayst see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chase, be zealous therefore and repent, he says in verse 19. In verse 28, he, he said, he invites us, he said, Behold, I stand at your door, the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in with him and will sup with him and he with me. You know, I just wanted to say that I've been a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and I've not always been a faithful member of the church. I've left the faith, but I was rebaptized and became, and, and became a member of the church once more and and was uh, recommitted has recommitted my life to the Lord to Jesus Christ because I know his coming is near and I'd like all my friends and family to be ready every one of us to be ready to go home with Jesus when he comes I would really love that and this may be the beginning of reaching out to family, friends, and the community, and with friends with, and neighbors within the community to repent and to be ready for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him that overcometh, he says in verse 21 of Revelation 3, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down before my Father in his throne. In verse 22 it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. You know, so that this message is for the church, and it's a sobering message. It's a sobering message message for the church to wake up, wake up and stop preaching in circles, stop preaching weak, watered down doc doctrine and start preaching the foundational doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventist church, the foundational of the doctrines that I knew as a child, as a child that even I did not forget when I was not con connected 
to Jesus Christ when I was out there in the world. And that those foundational teachings and doctrine is what brought me back to the fold. I remembered them because the Holy Spirit of God prompted me to return in, in prompted my conscience, my mind to return to the fold as the prodigal son did. So I am the prodigal son and I have returned. I must say that there are some preachers particularly within the Seventh-day Adventist faith to which I'm a member that does not preach God's last day message. You know, we, we preach, we are Protestants and we preach against the false doctrines of particularly the Roman Catholic Church. The false teaching. That's how we became Protestants because we pre we're, we we preach against even though we should not, must never hate hate or poke fun at our Catholic brothers and sisters because of, a lot of them are genuine Christian. A lot of them will be saved because they will be saved based on the knowledge that they had of Jesus Christ. The message that they have received through, through the Bible to understand Jesus Christ at the level of learning that they have, they, they will be saved. I believe that there are some older Catholics who may have passed, who, who, who are, have, have lived a faithful life to God, who will be saved. But we have to be in a position, if we are preaching against the, the Antichrist doctrines and the, the doctrines of the Antichrist, that we must be in a position of moral authority, a position of moral authority. And if we are not genuine and we are not living and teaching the true doctrines of the Bible, the, our foundational doctrines that we have strayed from over the years. It makes no sense about us preaching about the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation because the beast of Revelation and the Antichrist, you know, the false religion of Revelation, we know who that organization is and who that is referring to. But, you know, in preaching the doctrines of the last days, the, the three angels' message, we have to be, do it in a loving way. We cannot do it in a way of condemnation. We've got, got to do it in a loving way, but we have to speak truth and stand up and preach truth. There are those who will most definitely oppose you for preaching the, the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. There are those who will, who are Christians, who are Adventist believers, but they will oppose you because they do, they, they they don't want you you to to really bring out the spirit of the Antichrist and the false teaching of the Antichrist. A lot of them are have been educated in secular colleges and colleges that share the false teachings of the false religions that are out there. So they will not, they will not be very uh, attentive or accept, accepting of your, uh, your desires to preach the truth, to preach God's truth. They will not be. Sometimes they are even ministers who, who, who oppose the believers preaching and concentrating on preaching the last day message of Daniel and Revelation. And they, and they will not hide it. They are blatant and they will let you know that they oppose, they oppose you. But, but if they are ministers or they are lay preachers or whatever position they hold within the Seventh-day Adventist church, if they are opposing you, what purpose do they serve? What purpose do they serve preaching around in circles? 
what purpose do they serve not teaching you and opening your mind to the nearness of the coming of Jesus Christ? What purpose do they serve? This is not a joke business. This is not a joke matter. The coming of Jesus Christ is near. So we must endeavor to prepare the saints and, and to preach the third angel's message. The third angel's message is the message of the Seventh-day Adventist church that are to be preached today. Not some secular religion or secular faith. Not some soothsaying. <laughs> the soothsayers them and the necromancers and and all those folks who were around Daniel when he was in was he was when he was in Babylonian captivity, all those folks failed, and they failed miserably to interpret the the king's dream in Daniel two. They could not interpret the king's dream. But the, but Daniel, who was a child of God, who was held in captive in Babylon, was able to interpret the, the king's dream. Because he, Daniel, a, a child of God, his life, his heart, his entire being was, co was controlled by God and, the, and God's Holy Spirit. So God communicated with him and he was able to, to interpret and to recall, not only interpret, but to recall the king's dream. You know, the preachers, they preach around in circles and they are not directing the saints to God and to prepare them to get ready for the return of our Savior, Jesus Christ. One very important thing that I'd like to mention to people who are contemplating becoming members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, is that you must have to become Bible students and study the Word of God thoroughly for yourself. Do you own, do your own studies and pray to the Lord to open your understanding. We are living in the last days and many preachers themselves are not committed to the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. And to his true message. They are in it for the money. And the social status. But God is not a respecter of persons. And look not on your education. Your financial or social status. Or any other reason. Social reason. Why you should. Be or not be saved. You look at us all. As equal. To our lay people throughout the world who are experiencing opposition throughout their churches when they are preaching God's last day message, remember that sometimes you will have to create your own podium to spread the word of God. It does not have to be from the podium of your local church. It can be, be on the World Wide Web it, and social media. It could be at college and other public places. It may be from selling tr true Adventist literature, such as the Great Controversy, the Desire of Ages, or Patriots and Prophets by Ellen G. White, or other authors like Uriah Smith, the writer of the book Daniel and the Revelation. Those books and many others contain, others contain the foundational doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and the preparatory measures for the final crisis on this earth are contained on the pages of, of these books that you should use as a guide along with your Bible. So you use them as along with your Bible because they are not a separate Bible from the Bible. They are a guide to the greater light, which is the Word of God, the Holy Bible. You know, you have to stay away from falsity, friends, because it, it, the, in the newly translated 
Bibles that they have so-called New World Translation and other Bibles. They have got missing chapters, missing verses, and they are an ever-lingering danger to your soul salvation. I was not always a faithful member, as I've told you before, even though I was attending church services. But having rebaptized, I've really seen my purpose. And the purpose that God has given me is to spend the rest of my days sharing his message. One never knows how long they have to live in this world. This world is full of uncertainty. So we must use every opportunity we get to share the good news of salvation. The present surge in sexual immorality and the acceptance of it as a norm in the American society and other major countries of the world is also a great way mark. It's a great way mark, an indicator that the coming of the Lord is near. The preachers within my faith who are preaching God's true message and teaching the saints, God's children, on how to be ready. I applaud and encourage them to continue the preaching of God's last day message. I applaud them because there are those within our, our church organization that continue to preach God's last day message the three angels' messages. You, sometimes you, you will never hear that, that those words coming out of the mouth of some preachers. They don't talk about the three angels' messages anymore. They don't, you know. But, but the three angels' messages is the last day message. And that is the foundational doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventist Church are embodied bodied in the three angels' messages. If you claim you're a part of God's remnant church, stop your vile imitation of the fallen churches of the world. Cop copying, you know, some preachers, <laughs> they, they are copying the hollering, and the, the hooping that secular preachers do. Stop the entertainment gospel and preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ and this three angels' messages. The word three angels' messages will never come out of the mouth of some pastors because some of them have been attending seminaries of other denominations that are anti adventist So when they are placed in charge of their respected congregations, they literally preach against the values and foundational doctrines of the Seventh-day Adventist church then there are those who preach to you and take you around in circles. Like some type of soothsayers who are, who are a type of religious fraud, basically. All they do is to preach very soothing words that they believe their congregants want to hear. They will preach from every type of, of scripture except on the Sabbath, the commandments of God and the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. They will, I will repeat this, they will preach from every type of scriptures except on the Sabbath. They will not discuss the Sabbath. They rarely ever preach about the sanctity of the Sabbath, the commandments of God, which God gave Moses and God gave us mankind to keep, and the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. Some of these ministers will even implore you to stop preaching about the prophecies of, that, of John the Revelator, about the Sabbath, and about healthy dieting and living, which are foundational doctrines of the church. And they tend to want to throw disparaging words at other ministers and members or lay people who are teaching these foundational truths of Seventh-day Adventists. Adventist believers, when I was a child, would never go on a podium of our church with very short dresses. That would leave nothing to the imagination. That's the female members would not go on the podium 
wearing a dress that leaves nothing to the imagination. You know, you can't do that in the house of God. You, you cannot desecrate the house of God in that, in that sort of a way. You've got to represent God. As, as the bride, you're, you're the bride of, we are the bride of Christ. And we must dress to represent, to represent Jesus Christ. We cannot dress in a way that's um, suggestive as females or males. Because you've got the males now who are wearing all these tightened outfits heightened suit, you know. That also, too, those things are an abomination to God, you know. When I was a young, a teenager and attended church, you never see that stuff going on in the church. You know, the church are allowing and accommodating that, and people of high office are doing that. You know, cleavage and all that stuff. You know, we've got to do better. We've got to do better as a church. You know, those things are looked at as not important. And some people say the heart is important. But if the heart is converted, the body will be converted. You know, so we must really honor the Lord. But honor him and reverence him and reverence his sanctuary. Tightly fitted attire that have their undergarments imprinted and shown through their dresses and decked out with jewelry of all type of colors. You see that nowadays in our congregation. These modes of attire are fitting of the fallen churches. The fallen churches that are now difficult to differentiate, to differentiate from some of our congregations. I would really like our believers to remember that you do not need to have to, have to be well educated and attend Bible college to preach the word of God as a lay preacher and does not need an ordination or pulpit. I have a number of sources that preach God's true gospel and are ordained ministers of the SDA church who I believe I could refer you to if you are not yet Adventist and they will guide you. You know, I, I've got some, some real great ministers that I've seen who are preaching the gospel who I will not really name right now. But some, they, they have got great programs, you know, and, and, and they have got great uh, they, have, they have got great teachers, organizations, Seventh Day Adventist based organization that have great teachers who are preaching God's true message, not the watered down message and the entertainment that's going on now in some of our churches. You know, uh, I have a number of sources that preach God's true gospel and are ordained ministers of the Seventh-day Adventist Church who I believe I could refer you to, to consult on certain questions that you may like to ask if you, you know, you could also please put your, your questions below this video and I'll be glad to assist you in the study of God's word. And if any questions that I may not be able to answer, I know of learned teachers of the scriptures that I could refer you to so that you, they, they could help you and guide you. Yet I also know of Bible, uh, Bible study material and also uh, Bible lessons that I could enroll you in. So you could... You could uh, contact us you could you could uh, contact us and you could um, possibly leave your a message you could go on our Facebook page and leave a message go to our Facebook page and leave a message 
message us and we will send you literature. We will send you books and literature. Good books. Not the recent stuff. The watered down um, Great Contraver, version of the Great Controversy. We, we will send you one of the original copies of the Great Controversy. controversy. But I'm also doing my trying to do my part in sharing this message to the world that all those who hear will repent and turn to the Lord before it is too late. Once you are baptized and you are commissioned by the Lord Jesus Christ to preach the gospel to every living man on earth of every language and country, according to Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, we must, God loves all men. God does not prefer any one of any nationality over the other over others of other nations. God does not love a, 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 an, an American more than a, an Iranian. God does not love a, a, a Trinidadian more than a Jamaican or vice versa. Because Jesus' mission, his mission is that to come to the world to, and he died for, for, for the world, for all men. He didn't prefer any one more than the other. He loves us all. Jesus loves us all. But I'd like to say that all of our membership and churches are into the type, the type, of, not all of our membership, not all, not all. I let me emphasize that not all of our membership and, mem and congregations are in this sort of style, the Laodicean lifestyle and message that I just described. Not all. Not all of our congregations. There are congregations and ministers that I've seen who are dedicated to the true gospel of the Lord and of the third angel's message. Of, of the last day message of Jesus Christ. There are churches that I know and congregations and believers that are that that are accepting of God's true message, of the third angel's message, and preaches the message. As our church have grown now over twenty two million members and many thousands of congregations and we have we and and we must accommodate our unbelievers or the unconverted but must be an example to them and how we dress and carry ourselves as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ remember when Jesus spoke to the people or healed them he would admonish them to go and say no more was it a fantasy that, that of Jesus or something he knew that was possible when he said, go and sin no more? If Jesus knew that you could not keep the Ten Commandments, why would he, would he give you the, the Ten Commandments if he know you couldn't keep it, right? If he know that, that, that you cannot live a sanctified life, why would he come and, 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 and through his prophet state, let that mind be in you which is in Christ Jesus. Why would Christ, why would the Holy Spirit inspire God's prophets to, to make those statements if it was not possible to live a sanctified life? You can live a sanctified life through the blood of Jesus Christ. You can live a sanctified life through the power of God's Holy Spirit. You can. Today, many false preachers, some of them I hear, like people like Preflo, Dollar, and others are claiming that we should never try to keep God's law because we cannot keep it. Is that true? No, not at all. Surely that is a lie. The Lord would never give us a law he knew we cannot keep.
eat. We ought not to come to him and continue to live a life of presumptuous sinning. It is understandable that many of our faults will take years to overcome. Yet when it comes to worship, we should show utmost respect and honor to God. I have been down that road with my life and the Lord has shown me mercy. Yet, through faith in him, I'll try to live without presumptuous sin. But when you look at videos of worshipers of our faith in different churches around the world, the acceptance of loose dress codes and acceptance of secular modes of dressing in both male and female are mainly done in our churches in the kind of in economically well-off countries in the West. We cannot publicly present ourselves on a podium to represent our churches and our Savior with cleavage protruding all over the place. Who do we think we are pleasing when we do that? <laughs> when we do that, who do we think we are pleasing? Ourselves are the God of heaven. We understand that maybe some of us have not yet reached the perfect level of our master, Jesus Christ. But, sh but should we use that as an excuse to show irreverence to God by claiming that no one is perfect? Should we continue to defy God and to continue to preach that we cannot reach a sinless life while we cannot enter God's children with sin? Our God's kingdom, rather. We cannot enter God's kingdom with sin in our lives. So, I'm saying that if we are saying that we cannot live without sinning, we're saying that we cannot enter heaven then, because we cannot enter heaven with sin. We can overcome sin through the blood of Jesus Christ. Preachers of the gospel cannot act as, as if this is a joke matter and continue to preach their entertainment gospel. Some of our congregations have dancing moves <laughs> that are even much more hotter than the dancing moves in a nightclub, I tell you. I've seen it, you know. Yeah, I've seen it in some congregations. I've visited many different congregations and I've seen hot dancing moves that are on par with those in a nightclub. I've seen it. But you know, we have got to get out of that and we cannot secularize God and secularize the gospel and, and, and that type of Christianity and accept that, uh, expect that God must accept that. God is not compelled to accept nothing like that. You know, he's not, he's not compelled to accept nothing like that and will not accept anything that is identical to the music offered by to the devil out there in the world in other words you cannot offer to god music or worship that is offered in a nightclub you've got to elevate god and put him higher than that kind of music you've got to to elevate the Lord and, 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 and make his worship way, way above that that is offered in secular places. Because believe it or not, the people who are clubites and go to a nightclub are doing a form of worship. Under that, they are not worshiping God. Trust me, they are not worshiping God. They are, they are worshiping the devil. The devil and Satan, right? So when you're worshiping God, you've got to offer to God. What you offer to God has to be way, way above that, that which is offered to Satan, right? Because the Lord is our maker. We belong to God. The Lord could say, well, you know, I own you, but he, he's not like that. He's telling you to repent. He, He's giving you the opportunity to make your choice. That is what God is doing. God is not a dictator, but he gives us chances and he, he gives us the opportunity to choose between good and evil.
we have to remember that we are no longer many years away from the coming of the Lord. So the preachers of the gospel cannot act as this is a joke matter and continue to preach their entertainment gospel. Some of our congregations, you know, as I've said, have dancing moves and even much more hotter than the dancing moves in the nightclub. And there are people who may show up at some of our congregations just for the entertainment. Trust me, there are people that show up at some of our congregations just for the entertainment that we are providing for them. They are not showing up to be inspired and to change their lifestyle and their way of living. And they will not remain in our church if they can get the same entertainment in any secular place. For some of our congregations are as secular as it gets. We are at a crossroads in our worship style and our faith. There was a time when our clergy preached that you can live a sanctified Christian life through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Now they are preaching that if you are gay or gender fluid, come as you are and it does not matter. You can come and, and stay here and stay in a safe place. That is what they claim. But even though the Bible tells us to come as we are, it did not say that we should come into his church and live in sin and spread the immoral lifestyle you're living inside his church. You cannot serve God and men at the same time. It is, it's got to be one or the other. These are the questions that I would like every Christian who views this channel and video to honestly ask themselves and points that they must ponder as to how we should proceed into the future as a church. I truly hope that through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ that we will see Christ in our lives for he has the power to allow us to live a sanctified life and one without sin. Remember that though we are taught collectively about the truth as a church, our commitment must be of one of individual acceptance of Jesus Christ and his values and not the ones that we have created for ourselves. We only have to ask him daily for the power to do so and to surrender to him and do what it takes in terms of obedience to make it possible. Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak with you. Thank you for your support of our channel. Thank you for subscribing. Have a blessed Sabbath and a wonderful day. God bless you. Until next time.